That it is. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone played with these. They didn't yeah. play like I did. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before we start, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as well as that, comment down below, I subscribed, and you'll be entered in our monthly shoutout giveaway. On today's video, we will be looking at different times Pawn Stars got massively scammed. You wanna know the difference between these two relics right here? This one's worth 2,500 bucks, this one's worth nothing. One or two people a day walk in here with a phony Rolex they bought up someone for 50 or 100 bucks. Though Corey Harrison grew up in the pawn shop, he had to learn some business lessons the hard way. When I first started working the night shift, I didn't have much experience here, and being the typical 18 year old kid, I thought I knew everything, the big cost said in a 2010 segment on the History Channel. He also said it must have gone around town pretty quick because I bought six fake Rolexes in one week. His foolhardily ways cost him $4,000 and really ticked off the family. Viewers had learned that there are thousands of tricks sellers use on fake timepieces. Corey's dad, Rick Harrison, shared some time-tested tips in a 2009 segment, but his bottom line was this. If you're going to buy a Rolex off somebody, don't buy it off the internet. Don't buy it off Craigslist, come to a guy like me if you want a used one, or buy a new one, and do not buy it off the street. Willie Mays uniform. I got this jersey with the matching pants underneath. You're bringing me in something here that's amazing. The home runs this guy could have hit in this uniform, the bases he stole. In a 2012 episode called Free Willy, Corey made the blunder of forking over $31,000 for what he believed was a game-worn, millie-waist San Francisco Giants uniform from 1961. But the red flags with this one weren't apparent from the jump. For starters, the uniform was pristine, a point not lost on Chum Lee and observed, this doesn't look game warm. Willie Mays was a badass, he was sliding around the dirt and the grass. I imagine there would be a bunch of stains on it. And that was a very good observation on Chum Lee's part. Also, the seller had no authentication paperwork whatsoever, which is never a good sign. But Big Boss took a gamble and boy, he was all kinds of wrong. In an in-depth tracking of what happened to the uniform post Pawn Stars, the blog Hall of Shame discovered that not only did they fail to retail it at a ridiculous asking price of $80,000, but they only ended up getting $19,000 for it at authentication around two years later. And it gets worse. After reaching out to Dave Grubb, the senior uniform authenticator at Mears, Hall of Shame reported that the uniform was never worn in a game by Mays because it never even belonged to Mays. It was a spadling salesman sample with minimal value. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. Okay, you do have a ball and chain and a few old uh, handcuffs. In a fifth season episode called Corey's Big Play, Rick made the unusual mistake of buying something he was unsure of before he had authenticated it. Others on what he believed a 19th century Wells Fargo strong box, only to have his hopes of a profit shot down by expert and show regular Mark, the beard of knowledge, Hal Patton, who called the box a complete fantasy piece. Hal Patton twisted a knife a little more, saying, it's one of the most faked items out there. The seller also brought the box in stuffed with ball two and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Yuma and Folsom prisons, but Rick recognized them as fakes right away, meaning Rick definitely should have sensed something wasn't right with the box. The old man, who observed the whole transaction, wasted no time rubbing it in, telling Rick, I thought it was fake from the start. In a History Channel segment in 2010, Rick Harrison discussed the time he was cheated by a girl's best friend. A man in a sharp suit was looking upon a pair of diamond earrings. Harrison asked all the right questions, the seller gave all the right answers, and even had a receipt. Harrison forked over $40,000. Three days later, the police showed up. The jewelry was stolen. The victim got her diamonds back and the criminal paid the price, but Harrison was out his $40,000. That was the biggest bust I have ever had in a pawn shop, he said. With that said, this will bring us to the end of the video. 
If you enjoyed this video, once again, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as well as that, comment down below saying I subscribed. And again, you'll be entered in our monthly shout out giveaway. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video.